Hey everyone, and welcome back to our E3 2021 day one recap video. So what we're going to do is we're pretty much going to go through the presentations that happened yesterday during E3 and pick out which were the most significant games, in my opinion, that were announced or that they talked about once again for the Nintendo Switch. So we had four major presentations yesterday at E3. We had the Guerrilla Collective. We had the Wholesome Games presentation. We had Ubisoft. And we finally had Gearbox Games. Now, first of all, Gearbox had nothing to announce for the Switch, so we'll be focusing on the first three presentations. Since this is a recap video, we'll be doing this in a rapid fire format, going quickly through the games that marked the presentations, in my opinion, the most. I will also only focus currently on the games that are confirmed for the Switch. Some games, it's up in the air. Those I won't be focusing on. The games that are presented are for the moment confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch. Also remember that if you do like this content, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. So first, we had the Guerrilla Collective, which is an association of different indie publishers and also developers. Now this one had 10 games that I want to look through for the Switch. And the first game of these is Batora Lost Haven. Now this looks like a top-down 3D action shooter that reminds me a lot of what we got from Darksiders Genesis. The graphics look quite good and also at the same time it seems to have the same mix of switching between melee combat and twin stick shooter. This is definitely a game that unfortunately doesn't have a release date at the moment but I will be keeping an eye on in the future months. Next we had Akatori, which is a game that I like quite a bit. It is a 2D action game that seems very centered around martial arts combat. In the presentation, it seemed specifically centered around staff-based combat. Also, it had a beautiful pixel art style, and the level designs almost reminded me of a Mega Man-like level design, with a boss at the end of the stage that you basically have to figure out its pattern and then move on to the next stage. Next in the presentation, we had Archvale, which was presented as an action RPG with a co-op format. This game reminded me a lot of Enter the Gungeon with bullet hell elements thrown in as well. However, at the same time, we're starting to get a lot of games like this on the Switch. Can this one do enough to stand out? I guess we'll figure it out when it releases. Now, next on the list, we had Demon Turf, which seemed like a 3D action adventure game. And actually, this one quite reminded me a lot of Blue Fire that released earlier this year. There seems to be a very strong emphasis on very precise platforming in this game. And at the same time, the basic cell shaded graphics look very, very interesting. So this is another game I'll be keeping an eye on. However, it is only slated for 2022. Now, next on the list, we had Arietta of Spirits. Now, this is another top game in this presentation for me. It looks like a top-down Zelda game and it seems very very interesting announcing dungeon exploring and overworld exploring. It seems like a great great game. On top of it what really got me excited is this one is slated for summer 2021. We're probably going to be getting this game in the next couple of months. Now the next game took me completely by surprise. It is called Unmetal and they're obviously doing a throwback to the Metal Gear series. But not the Metal Gear Solid series, the Metal Gear series from the NES and SNES era. Because if you look at this game and you've played those games before, there's a very strong resemblance. Obviously this one seems more polished. But they're doing it with a very strong comedic twist. They're basically making fun of the genre all the while playing through the game. This one is going to be interesting me quite a bit. However, no release date on this one. Now the next game that they announced for the Switch was Severed Steel. Now this is an hyper stylized FPS game. However, this one, I have to tell you, I have doubts on the Switch how it's going to turn out. Number one, the footage that you're looking at and that they announced in the trailer obviously comes from the PS4. However, I'm not sure how this game is actually going to turn out on the Switch. I'm a little bit worried about frame rate and overall visual quality looking at some of the other FPS games we had and how this one is based, it seems, on very tight precision. But we'll see how it turns out when the game releases. No release date on this one either. Now next on the list, we had Death Trash, which is a 
post-apocalyptic action game with RPG elements. Look, I was getting very, very strong old school Fallout vibes from this game. And it seems like this because it seems like you're a survivor after an apocalypse and basically you have to make your way scavenging through the world in an action setting. However, as I said earlier, with those RPG elements thrown in, does that sound like Fallout? It does to me. And that seems where this game is going. Now, the last game from Guerrilla on the Switch side would have been Kitsune Tales. And basically, this looks like another straightforward 2D action platformer with some cutesy elements and some quite interesting level designs thrown in. Apparently, your character is going to be taking on the different elements to make its way through obstacles. Once again, sort of like that Mega Man-ish theme where you have to basically collect abilities to make your way through the future levels. Once again, very interested in this game. Going to be looking for it when it releases. Unfortunately, no release date for this one at the moment. So next, we had the Wholesome Games presentation. And now this presentation had over 26 games announced for the Switch. We're not going to go through 26 games here. I pulled out my nine favorite games that were presented, and that's what we're going to go through here today. I am, however, going to be sharing the link to their website down below. If you want to check in the video description, you can go on their website and see all the games that were presented. Now, the first game that attracted my attention was Amber Isle. Now, this game seems to be very heavily influenced by the Animal Crossing vibes. However, what seemed to differentiate it and really attracted me is that rather than just building a community, you seem to be running a shop in this game. And that is something I really enjoyed and something I found was a little bit missing from Animal Crossing. I would have liked to have a job or something that you could actually accomplish on a daily basis to really contribute to the community rather than just building up the island. This game seems to be bringing that and on top of it, it's all based around humanoid dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs, so this game got my attention. The next game that got my attention was Bear and Breakfast, which seems like a time management game where you're basically running a bed and breakfast. At first, I was sort of discounting this game, but then all of a sudden I discovered you are playing as the bear and there seems to be some weird stuff happening at night. So this one had enough spice added to it where it got my attention once again. Next, we had actually a shadow drop on the Nintendo Switch eShop with Beasts of Marvel Island, which seems like a 3D free roaming version of Pokemon Snap. Now, when I saw this game, I was like, this is a brilliant idea. Rather than being an on the rails shooter, you are basically free to explore the island freely. And at the same time, you have to find and capture all the pictures you need to fill out your album. However, first reviews of the game have been starting to come out. And apparently on the Switch version, there are quite a bit of frame rate issues. So I would look into that before dropping the cash on this one. Next game I found interesting was Freshly Frosted, which is a puzzle game where you're placing conveyor belts and you basically are running sort of a donut factory. Now, maybe it was because I was hungry, but nonetheless, this seems like a pretty interesting simple puzzle game. I think all will depend on the price it releases and if the gameplay levels are varied enough where you have enough content to keep you engaged for a good amount of time. Now, the next game we're looking at was pretty much my top game from this presentation, and that is Garden Story. Now, this isn't the first time we're hearing about this game, but it seems like a awesome action slash RPG adventure game where basically you're trying to restore your island and all the characters are different elements of gardens. Seems super interesting. Love the pixel art style. Can't wait for this game. We're supposed to be getting it this year. So next in this presentation, we had Coco Puzz Atlas, which once again seems like a world builder game. However, this time you are alone on a distant planet and there seems to be a survival aspect thrown in. You even have to sometimes fight off alien creatures. I love the vibe I was getting from this game because it basically throws in the builder format with the survival format. Looks like an amazing game presentation was very cutesy, but at the same time, it communicated a really decent vibe. Next, we had Mythic Ocean, and this is a game where there's already a free demo available on the Nintendo Switch eShop, and this is all based around undersea exploration and discovering the gods of this world. And basically, there seems to be different actions that will actually shape the world in different ways based on how you interact with these godlike creatures. 
seemed quite interesting, the visuals seemed good, I am going to be trying out the demo over the next few days, and I'll probably be getting back to you on this one. Now next was another top game from this presentation in my opinion, we had Rainbow Billy that was announced, which is an action adventure slash RPG. And you've probably already seen from the graphics, I got some really, really heavy Cuphead inspired type vibes from the designs on the characters, and also I'm giving a very heavily Paper Mario type design for the adventure. Now if they can deliver on any one of these aspects, it could be a totally awesome release. I'm definitely keeping my eyes peeled on this one. This seems like a very, very promising game. Now the last game from the Wholesome Games presentation that definitely had my attention was Skatebirds. Now, I don't know if this game needs any more explanation. It pretty much seems like Tony Hawk, but with crazy birds on the skateboards. This isn't the first time we've seen this game. I'm happy to see that the development seems to be looking good because the game seems to be evolving pretty well. But at the same time, I just can't wait to get an actual release date for this game and try it out for myself. That was pretty much it for the Wholesome Games presentation. Just in case you're wondering, when I'm not mentioning release dates, that's because none were announced, and I don't want to repeat myself at each and every game that there was basically no date announced. Now the last presentation we got that had elements for the Nintendo Switch yesterday was the Ubisoft presentation. Now there were only two games announced for the Nintendo Switch, but one of those two games is a major heavy hitter. Now first, let's get the first game out of the way, Just Dance 2022 was announced. Woohoo! New Just Danced. We all saw that one coming. There's one each and every year. No different for this year. The Nintendo Switch is going to get a new edition. It's going to sell like crazy. It's a fun time, but it's Just Dance 2022. Next, we got the pretty much biggest event for the Nintendo Switch from day one at E3. And that is the announcement of Mario Plus Rabbit's Sparks of Hope. Yes, the Mario plus Rabbit series is getting a sequel and I am super excited. Now, if you watch my channel on a regular basis, you know that I love the first entry a ton. And basically it is Mario plus Rabbit with XCOM style gameplay. Yes, this is a strategy shooter with Mario characters in it. Now we already got the DLC to the first game that threw the Donkey Kong universe in there switched up some gameplay elements and it was tons and tons of fun. This time around, they seem to be doing it again with Mario this time visiting different planets and also having the Lumas combined with rabbit characters and they seem to be a very important element in the storyline and also the gameplay. Now when I was watching this announcement, I was super super excited and I still am. The only part that was sort of a disappointment to this part of the presentation is that the game is slated for 2022, but we didn't get any more precision than that. We don't know if it's the start of 2022 or the end of 2022. So I can't believe that now we know about the game, but we might have to wait more than a year before getting it. Well, that was pretty much it for my recap of day one of E3 2021. Let me know what you all think about this content. Do you like these recaps? And I'll pretty much probably be doing them for each and every day of E3 as long as there's new news announced for the Nintendo Switch. Like I said, if you want to see what other games were announced in the Wholesome Games presentation, please follow the link down below in the description. All the other games are there. I picked out my favorites. Maybe there's some that I didn't choose that you will fall in love with. And on the way out, don't forget that if you did like this content, as I said earlier, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.